gardeners, Lindsay here with the Mindful Living Movement, and this video is going to help you find the perfect tree for your property. So maybe you're sick of seeing the same trees up and down the street, maybe you're looking for something really drought tolerant, something that isn't super fussy with watering, or there's a specific sort of style or aesthetic that you're looking for your space. Whether you're making sure your property stands out or just finding that right tree for your needs, um, this video will help you to decide on the perfect one and avoid buying a tree that is going to be difficult to maintain or doesn't actually end up fitting what you're going for. Trees are a big time commitment, also usually a big financial commitment as well. And so I'm gonna help you get really clear on what it is that you want, help you make the right decision, help the process go much faster, and make sure that you don't regret buying the tree that you purchased. I'm gonna share 10 points that will help you discern the right tree, and then also one bonus at the end. So first and foremost is your hardiness zone. Do a Google search, find out what your hardiness zone is, and then make sure that the tree or bush shrub that you're purchasing is going to be able to thrive in that environment. Secondly is soil type. Find out what kind of soil that you have and make sure that you find a tree that is suited to that. You don't want to go and stick a tree that doesn't like moisture into a low place where water likes to sit. You're going to end up just having lots of problems. Um, something that is likes a well draining soil would be great for say like a sandy soil but not clay. Um, if you also can test your soil to find out if it is on the more alkaline or acidic side of things, certain trees have a preference. Also if the tree suckers, so meaning that it pops out new little babies from its main base, this could be a problem. Things like lilacs, um, your common lilac puts out a lot of suckers, but there is a lilac variety like a velosa lilac that is a very low suckering. It almost doesn't put out any at all, which can be really nice for more urban spaces, whereas something that suckers would be better maybe for a rural one. How many seeds does the tree drop, or does it drop any at all? Uh, I have a previous experience with elm trees dropping seeds all over my garden, and it's a lot of work, not very much fun, so you will maybe want to avoid that. What's the overall maturity height for the tree? What is its diameter and what is its height? If you are going to go and stick a 60 foot tree next to your garden, it's not going to take too, too long before your garden doesn't have sun anymore, so mindful of that how fast a tree grows. So you can look for, usually they categorize them as fast, medium, or slow growth. Um, and you can sometimes find it'll say things like grows 12 inches within a year or three inches, six inches within a year. These are really good metrics to know. Um, if you're trying to put in a shelter belt, you may wanna go with a tree that grows quite fast. So keep that in mind. What kind of rooting structure a tree has is really important. So whether it's a fibrous or a tap root, you wanna be very careful that you don't go and put a fibrous rooting plant tree next to your foundation of your house, your sewer line, your water lines. Um, fibrous roots tend to be a little more shallow and they spread and they can puncture and they're going to seek water, which means they'll probably end up in your water lines or sewer lines. And there is a big myth that whatever sort of branching structure a tree has, that's how it roots. Be very careful, do your research, they don't always follow that. Finding out the overall shape of the tree. So is the tree tall and skinny? That might fit really good into a smaller yard or is it something that is quite round, quite broad? Are you looking for just like a funky decorative tree? Find out what its overall growth habit is um, and know that it's always going to try and seek that. And then also finding out how it branches. So is it really thickly closed in branches? Is it gonna stop wind really well? Or is it something that the wind is going to pass through? So finding out kind of how that is and if what you depend on what you need. And also a bonus. So something in permaculture we call stacking functions, which is basically not just purchasing a tree strictly maybe for decorative purchase it or decorative reasons, or a hedge, but maybe finding out if this tree is something that can also produce food for you or habitat, depending on um, maybe both. <laughs> if you have like fruiting hedges, this could be food for you and food for wildlife or trees that produce nuts. 
or some sort of other medicinal properties, some resins and things like that. So maybe finding out if there is something that you're interested in in trying to incorporate both a medicinal food and windbreak aesthetic. So just sort of bringing all those things together. This is going to help you out a lot. Once you get really clear on what you want your tree to do, it becomes very easy to just start eliminating. If you're like, I need a tree that is only this wide, but I'm okay with it getting really tall, something like maybe a columnar aspen is really nice. They're really tall and skinny. Um, if you are needing something that is maximum, maybe like 10 to 15 feet tall, you may want to consider something more of a hedge. You know, if you're working with a more narrow space, trying to find a hedge that doesn't put out a bunch of suckers, something that stays a little bit more contained. So once you know what you want, it becomes very easy when you start tree shopping. You can just go to a greenhouse and say, these are my requirements. This is what I don't want. So if you don't want a tree that puts out suckers, if you don't want a tree that's going to drop a whole bunch of seeds, be very clear on those things um, because trees are a very long commitment. Some trees grow very, very slowly. Um, even fast growing trees don't usually grow more than about 12 inches in a year. So we're giving a real long time commitment and depending on how many trees you need, there could be a pretty good solid financial investment in purchasing those trees as well. So if this is something that helped you out and you would like to get first access to all sorts of other goodies, um, stuff that I don't release on here, but I send out to my email list, subscribe to my email newsletter. Also, if this is something you think that can help out um, someone you know who's tree shopping, go ahead and send it to them and help them work through um, eliminating because there's a lot of options out there. This is what I find is being very clear and just eliminate what you don't want will narrow down the field considerably for you. Hope you have a really good rest of the day and we will see you again soon.